What's going on my dear friends? Today in this video, let's learn and master the Angular Framework's latest version. So, let's get started. Alright, so guys, we successfully pulled the data from our centralized service. Now let's try to load the same service user value inside the post list component. So how do we do that? For this also guys, we have to create this user service new instance inside the post list component. So let's uh, do this same as previous inside the post list component is file, create the constructor method. Inside this, let's create the new instance of the user service. So how do we create that? For this, we use the new keyword, right? So inside this constructor method, add this new keyword. After this service class name, which is this user service. This u and s are uppercase. So next select this auto complete. This will add the import statement. Now guys at the end, don't forget to add the parentheses as well. Perfect. So now in order to access the service class, we have to assign this to a variable. So inside the post list component class scope, create a global variable, something user service and set this type as any. Now inside the constructor, assign this to the user service new class instance. Now guys, inside the post list component HTML file, we'll render this using the string interpolation. So add an h1 tag and add the string interpolation. Inside that, add the user service which is the user service new class instance. So after this dot and the user array variable is user. So in order to display this, we have to use the JSON pipe, right? So add that here. So that's it. Save this all and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, we got the user array values rendered inside the post list component. So now our user array is inside of a single service file and we are accessing this in these components at the same time. So this is the beauty of Angular services. Now we want to access the same user data inside the users component. So again, how do we do that? So guys, again, we have to do the same process. So we'll create a new instance of the user service and we can get the user array like this. So using this centralized service, we can share data between components without any relationships. But guys, with this approach, we have an issue. So to find out this issue, we have to dive into some technical behind the scene process of these services. So let's see this in the next lecture. All right. So guys, as I mentioned before, this Angular service is also a simple TypeScript class. So in order to access or trigger a class, we have to create a new instance of that class. So actually, what is this new instance? So guys, simply in order to work with a class, we have to duplicate that class within the current class. So for example, in order to access the user service class inside of the app component class, we have to bring that exact version of the user service class into this app component class. So this is what we are doing in this new instance. So if we dive more technically, when we create this class instance, it allocate a new unique memory block for this instance. This memory block holds all the properties and methods defined in the class, allowing us to interact with them independently of other instances. For example, when we create an instance of the user service class inside the app component, a separate memory block is allocated for this user service instance. This instance now contains all the data and methods defined in user service. And we can call these methods or access this data directly within the app component. But guys, there is a problem. When we create a new instance of the user service inside the post list component, it allocates another separate memory block for this same user service class. This means that the post list component gets its own copy of the user service with its own separate memory space. And again, if we want to access the user data inside the user component, we have to create 
again another new instance of this user service. This would allocate yet another memory block resulting in multiple instances of the same user service each occupying its own space in the memory. So guys like this every time we create a new instance of the user service we are not only duplicating the class but also duplicating the memory used which can lead to inefficiency. We end up with multiple instances of the same service each with its own separate data and state. This can cause inconsistencies in the data being shared across components and also based valuable resources. So in order to solve this problem, Angular provides us a powerful feature called dependency injection. So instead of manually creating a new instance of the user service, each time we can simply use this dependency injection approach. So guys, this Angular dependency injection system can create a single instance of the user service and share the same instance across all components that need it. So we call this as the singleton approach, right? So guys, let's see this dependency injection in action. Uh, all right, so guys, nothing much here. All we have to do is inside the constructor parentheses, we have to inject the user service. So guys, before this, uh, let's add a constructor method inside the user service. So we can capture exactly when this new user service class instance was created. So inside the user service file, add the constructor method. Inside this constructor method, add the console log with the message something user service new instance created. So guys, hope you guys will remember what is this constructor method. So we learn about this in detail in the components lifecycle section, right? So simply this constructor method will trigger once a new class instance of this service class created. So hope you guys remember this. So save this and go to the browser. Inside the browser console, we can see that this constructor method triggered three times, which means at this moment, we have created three new instances of the same user service inside the memory. So now let's dive into the dependency injection part. Alright guys, now let's do this dependency injection. It's very easy. So guys, we have to inject the dependency injection to the constructor. So inside the subcomponent constructor parentheses, so pass the user service class name. So in order to use this dependency injection inside this component, we have to assign this to a variable. So private keyword and the variable something user service di so this di stand for dependency injection so after this add the colon and that's it so we successfully injected uh, the user service to this component constructor awesome right so guys this is not done yet in order to work this dependency injection we have to make this user service injectable so still this user service is just a simple TypeScript class. If you guys can remember when we creating component that I said in order to transfer a TypeScript class as a component, we have to add the component decorator. So then only Angular will recognize that TypeScript class as an Angular component. So the same thing can apply to this as well. In order to make this user service injectable, we have to add the injectable decorator. So inside the user service file, let's add this injectable decorator. So we have to add this outside of the class scope. So top here, add the add symbol. After this, decorator name is injectable with uppercase i. Next, select this to complete. This will add the import statement. Now guys, after this, add the parentheses. Next, this injectable method required the provided parameter. So inside this, add the object scope and inside this, add the key provided in. Follow this naming convention. After this, set this value to root. So pass this inside course. So guys, with this, we are making this service class as an injectable class. With this provided in, we are telling Angular that inject 
this user service in the root level of our angular application so we can use this user service single instance all over our application inside of multiple components so we call this singleton injection right so that's it for this injection um, before we move on let's comment all other new instances of this user service So guys, in order to work with this dependency injection, like previous, we have to assign this to a variable. So for this also, we'll use the same variable, this user service for this as well. So simply assign this dependency injection to this global variable user service. That's it. Now we don't need to change anything inside the HTML file because we are using the same user service variable, right? That's it. So save this all and go to the browser. As you guys can see, yeah, still we got this user data. And also inside the browser console, we got this service constructor message triggered. So which means this dependency injection successfully created this service class new instance. So that's why this constructor method triggered. Perfect. Alright guys, so this is how we use the dependency injection, right? Alright, so guys, using this dependency injection, we can access this service from the other components as well. So let's do this. So go to the process component TS file and let's again inject the user service inside this constructor. So inside the component constructor parentheses, add the injection. So again, add the private keyword. And after this, give it a name, user service di. After this, colon and add the user service. Alright, so next uh, let's inject this in the user profile as well. So follow the same process inside the user profile constructor method. Add this injection. First, we have to add the variable user service di. After this, the service file name user service. Select this auto complete. This will add the import statement. So now let's load this uh, user data array inside this user profile component as well. So go to the user profile component HTML file. Inside this again, create h1 tag. Inside this add a string interpolation. Inside that pass this injected user service. After this dot and our service user array name, which is this users. So after this, in order to show this inside the browser, we have to add the JSON pipe. So in here, we are getting this compile error. Why is that? So guys, in order to use this, we have to add the import statement of this JSON pipe. So quickly add that as well. Alright, so that's it. Save this all and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, now we are getting the user data inside the all three component. If you look at the browser console, now we got only one, the user service constructor log message triggered. If you can remember when we creating the new instances using the traditional way, this created three separate new instances of the user service. But with this dependency injection, this created only single instance and share that single instance across multiple components. So this is the beauty of dependency injection. So using this method, we can use this user service instance in as many as components that we needed. So hope you guys got the idea. All right, so before end of this uh, lecture, we'll dive into the some technical parts. Let's talk about how dependency injection works in Angular. So when we inject the user service into a component, Angular handles a lot of things behind the scenes to make sure everything works smoothly. First, when Angular starts your app, it checks all the services that are registered. Since we use provided in root in our user service, Angular registers it at the root level, meaning it creates just one instance of the 
user service that can be shared across the whole app. So now when we inject user service into the app component for the first time, Angular creates a new instance of that service because it hasn't been used before. So this instance is then stored in something called the injector. The injector is like a storage area where Angular keeps all the service instances it creates, right? So after that, when another component like post list component or user components also ask for access of the user service, Angular doesn't create a new instance. So instead of this, it reuse the one it already created before. So this is why when we check the browser console, we saw the user service constructor log message only once, even though we used the service in multiple components. So the best part of this dependency injection is that it makes everything more efficient. We don't have to manually create new instances or worry about passing services around between components. Angular does all of this for us, making sure that we are always working with the single shared instance of the service. So this keeps our app fast and memory efficient. So in short, dependency injection ensures that we can easily share a single service instance across multiple components without duplicating effort or memory usage. It's one of the things that makes Angular so powerful and easy to work with. So hopes that clears things up. Well, I guess hope you guys all have now clear picture about what is Angular service. So in the previous lecture, we created this user service manually. So now in this lecture, let's see how we can generate this using the Angular CLI. So let's dive in. So nothing much here guys, same like components, we have an Angular CLI command to generate this service file. So inside the VS Code integrated terminal, run this command, ng generate service. So this time we are going to generate a service. So we have to pass that after this generate command right so now after this just pass the name of the service file so we'll make it post service so guys remember in here you do not need to pass dot service naming extension so angular cli will do this for us so next guys as i said before so as a good practice we put all the service files inside of another separate folder which is this services folder so in order to generate this inside of that folder, we have to pass the folder name before this service name. So before the service name, post add this services and after this add the slash. That's it. So now this will generate this post service file inside this services folder. All right, so that's it for this command. In order to execute this, hit enter. Now, as you guys can see here, this generated the post service file inside the services folder. So instead of that, we can see another file, the service.spec.file. For now, just ignore it. This file is related to the Angular testing. So in the Angular testing section, we will learn about this in detail. So now open this post service file. Inside this, guys, we can see the default code setup of an Angular service and, and also it already comes with the injectable decorators. So we do not need to worry about anything. We can just simply start working in this service file. So this is the beauty of this Angular service. So in order to work with this service, we can simply inject this to the relevant component and the same process like previous. And also guys, a single component can access multiple services at once and also a single service can be used within the multiple components. So hope you guys got the idea.